I'm from Chicago. My name is Reggio. I perform down in the subway and on the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I dance in schools and on the news. Sit back, relax, let me strike up my feet. I grew up on the south side of Chicago. Chicago has always been my home base. I'm pure Chicago. When I was seven years old, I saw tap for the first time. It was love at first sight. Now, the moment you've been waiting for. These are the shoes I'm going to wear tomorrow when we go outside. Voila, red and white, one of my favorite, favorite colors of all time. Look at that. I'm so fortunate to have all these beautiful shoes. You know, when I first started dancing, I had to improvise by putting bottle cap tops on the bottom of my shoes. But look at me now. Real shoes, every color. La 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 la. It was tough in the beginning because people and friends would say, man, tap dance, and I don't know why you want to tap dance. Nobody do that anymore. My biggest motivator that kept me going as a tap dancer was love for the dance. At the time, I could not find nobody to teach me tap. So I started going to the library and studying the history of tap and looking up, uh, up tapes of tap dancers. The books I was taught that in Africa, they beat it, what they call the talking drums. And they could send out like messages on these talking drums. And when Africans were brought over to America, they were prohibited to play the talking drum. So they began to substitute with the sounds and the beating of their feet. And this developed into an art form. I don't know, I kept a lot of my stuff. These are my actual shoes I danced with in the subway years ago, man. These are turned into a museum piece, you know what I'm saying? Late teens and her 20s, I started going down in the subway to sharpen that crap and perfect it. In some ways, people look down on you because you're just out there, you know, you're not on a prestigious stage or anything. It, it kind of also shaped my life as a person. In 1985, my friend, she told me, my grandfather's a tap dancer. Matter of fact, he's gonna be in town next week to perform. We got an extra ticket for you. That's when I first met Brownie. When I saw him, I nearly fainted because I remember seeing him in some of the videos when I would go to the library and study the history of tap. He came from out of that era, the golden age of tap, and worked with the Duke Ellington, the Count Basie and stuff. And he really started to put it all together for me. Let's go home, brother, and be
when I worked with Brownie, when he showed me a routine, never counted. He never used terminology like flap, shuffle, ball chain, none of that. He just do the step and say, okay, man, do it. Nah, oh, man, that ain't it. Feel it. You got to feel it. And he passed that dance to me. Now I hold that dance. I teach it to everybody. A lot of times I'm telling my student, look, I don't count like that. If you want to count it for yourself, okay, but you got to feel this. When people see tap dancing, it brings a certain joy to them. It's like it's a happy dance. These steps are very pure, and they have a lot of meaning and a lot of history to them. And when you're true to it, it's true to you.